Good afternoon and welcome to our sixth COVID-0 class. I hope everyone is healthy and staying well under the circumstances. We'll begin as we always do from meditation position. Zazen position. Mok so, eyes closed. Makso Yame, we bow. Ray? What's this? Oh. So we'll begin with warm ups. So we're going to lower and then raise the bow. Try to keep your forearms straight. It's all in the wrist. Four. Unused hand at chain. Switch hands. Choke up if you have to. Be careful of your surroundings. Make sure you don't hit anybody. Switch hands. Rotate the bow left to right. I find I have to choke up on the bow a little more on this exercise because it's, the wrist is more isolated. Switch hands. And put the bow on your shoulder. Side to side. Just loosening the muscles up. I'm going to assume that you've already warmed up before training. As always, we will start out with our uh, basics, hojundos. Uh, basics are the building block of everything we do in the katas and in the techniques. That's why we do them. Why? Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. Overhead strike, itch, knee. So the bow comes back to the shoulder, comes straight in overhead. You'll notice I'm not finishing down by the waist. Finishing about the shoulder. I'm only caving in this skull a little bit. Son. She. The finger is not extended. Go. Rope. The palm is on top, supporting the strike. Sitch. Hotch. Our stances are shallow. Rope. Ku. Ju. By now, you may have noticed that I don't keep the count well while I'm uh, trying to teach. 45 degree strike, so it's coming in at an angle. The target is the shoulder or the collarbone. Itch. Knee. Sign. Chamber, once again, it's the shoulder. Palm is supporting the direction of the strike, so it's not on top. It's on the side at a 45 degree angle. The finger is in tight, not extended. Son. She. Go. The back of the bow is resting on the arm, not on the under uh, the armpit, and not down low. Sitch. Hotch. Ku. Ju. Le a chest strike. In this case, it's coming in at a slight downward angle. When we're practicing, we're using our imaginary selves, um, our evil, our imaginary evil twin as our target. So we're trying to slide under the elbow and get to the rib. So if my bow is on my, my arm above my elbow and my attack is under the arm or the elbow, there is a slight downward angle to the bow. Itch. Knee, son, she, go, rook, six, hatch, two, two. Now we are working our way down. We went from head, shoulder, chest, and now we're going to strike low. In this case, we will go into a deeper front stance since we are driving low. Itch, knee, son, she, 
Go. Row. Sit. High. Two. Two. Final technique for this set of pojundos. The pojundos are broken up into groups of five. So we will kamai, ski. Kamai is an inside to outside block. Ski is a punch. So we're blocking, then attacking. H. Knee. Sun. Chi. Now the Kamai is usually in a defense against an attack on the upper body. So we don't have to do a large circle. Our goal is just to protect the upper body. So it's a smaller circle. And the ski is a punch. We're driving into the throat. Small pointy end of a bow driving into the throat will crush the throat. Sit. Hot. Ku. Ju. You'll notice when I do the ski, I'm driving the bow along a straight line. Same idea when you throw your punch. It's a straight line. It's not this. So I'm not doing this when I do the punch with the bow. And I'm also tight, twisting in just like our punch. Good. Go back to ready. Now ready possession with the position with the bow is almost a combined position. Hand is on the hip. Bow is out at the end. Next set of ojundos. So we're going to slide forward, lock low, bring the bow back to the shoulder, and a 45 head swing. So this is a combination technique. Itch. Knee. Sun. Chi. Go. Whoa. Wait, 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 wait. One time for later. Sitch. Hatch. Go. Two. Relax, come back to ready. The next technique is also a block and strike combination. So what we're doing as we step forward, we're clearing an attack that's low and either spearing our opponent's foot or their groin. When we do that, we're using our forward hand to guide the bow. It is not holding on tight, so it is a loose grip. So as we step forward, we will not change hands. Step forward. As I clear the front, I'm pivoting. Then pivot back, spear. Now we change hands. Step forward, clear, spear. Switch hands, step forward, clear, Spear. Step forward. Clear. Spear. Go. Rope. Sitch. Hotch. Two. Two. Back to ready. The next one looks very similar to the Kamai. As we step forward, we'll change our hand. Instead of coming around in a circle, we're bringing the bow straight in. This is called sunuke, and it's called it's used for throwing dirt or sand into our opponent's face, temporarily blinding them for an act which would follow. 
So we're going to do Sunuke Ski. So we're doing it, we're adding a little additional technique to make this clear what it is. Everybody right foot forward. One. So I'm bringing the bow straight in. Ski. Knee. Sun. Notice that when I finished Sunu K, she, my palm is, is supporting the direction of the attack. So my palm is now underneath. And then I twist my hand in on the strike. Go. Whoop. Sit. Hot. Two. As I bring the bow in, as I'm draw throwing the sand forward, I want the bow to travel in as straight a line towards the opponent as possible. I don't want to do this. That'll throw the dirt or the sand off to the left or to the right. So I want to bring it straight in between me and my opponent. Two. Two. Come back to ready. Before when I had spoken about the Kamai and not being only in the, for the upper body. So how do we deal with an attack on the lower spot, uh, part of the body? Well, there is this block, but there's also a block that very much looks like a down block. So we will step out at a 45 degree angle. We will change our hands and the bow arches downward, almost like the Kamai when it's going up, but it goes down. And the idea is it's knocking the attack away. It is very much like a down block with the bow in your hand. Itch. But my, even though my feet are at a 45 degree angle, the attack that we're defending against is coming straight in. Knee. Son. You'll notice my hand is on the hip. Go. Rope. Sitch. Hotch. Two, two, come back to ready. Final technique. We're going to step forward. Actually, no, we won't step forward. So we're bringing the back of the bow up and into our opponent's chin. Step in and striking with what is essentially the back of the bow. In most cases, our attacks usually come in with our thumbs pointed at the attack. In this case, the attack is with our thumbs pointed away. As we step in, we drive the back of the bow in to the throat. So it's similar to what you, I guess you would call a reverse ski. As always, the target is the throat. Uh, the idea this is, uh, that, that this illustrates is that Matayoshi Kyobodo is sometimes referred to as the art of the two-headed staff because we are equally likely to use both ends of the weapon. Itch. Knee. Switch hands. San. Chi. Go. Rope. Sitch. Hotch. Two. Two. Come back to ready. Good. As always, one of the best ways to practice technique is with kata. So we're going to next do token kame no kone show. As we've said before, Token Kame no Kone Show is based on Takioko 1. Um, it's basically Takioko 1 with a bow. The footwork is all the same. Uh, the movements are all are the same idea of the movements. Low block, attack, uh, punches. So 
If the pattern looks familiar, that's, there's a reason for that. As always, we start out every kata. Set back slightly. Heels together, toes apart. Masubadachi. Hand is open on our palm. Bow is upright in our right hand. We bow and say, Oni gashimas, which means, may I have your attention. We also do this at the root of the body. Yes. Left hand comes to the right hand. We bring the bow up and under our arm. First move, turn, lower block. Parry, step, ski. Switch both hands, turn and lower block. Parry, step, ski, switch hands, turn and lower block, step, parry and strike, step and strike, we do not change hands, step, strike and ki, hey! turn, the long turn out of Takioka one, lower block, lower block, parry, step, and ski. Switch both hands, turn and block. Parry, strike, ski. Turn and block. Parry, step and strike. Step and strike, step, strike and ki. Right. Turn, lower block. Parry, strike, ski. Turn, switch both hands. Turn and block, parry, strike, ski. Switch the front hand, switch the back hand. The back of the bow is going to come all the way over to the left. And we finish with the bow under our arm like we started. Bow comes down, hand comes to our side. We bow. Arigato. Those must stop. Good. Josie and Josh. Token Kame no Koncho. No count. Stay together. Back to ready. I got to go to stop. Very well. Very well done. Thank you. So the next kata we will work on is Papu Haku Show. Like token kame no kon show. Papu Haku Show is based on an empty hand kata. Uh, in this case, Geeks I Die. Um, it was created by Kimo Wall, or Sensei Kimo Wall. Onigashimasu. Yoi. Now the opening is different in that we bring the bow back to an upright position. Our thumb is pointed down. We lean forward and grab the bow under our chin. We are now grabbing the bow in equal thirds. Step back. Side head strike. Come on. Pivot to a short front stance, 45 degree head block. Step in, chest, ski, step back, block down. We are in a back stance here. Our foot is, back foot is pointed away, our front foot is pointed towards our opponent. The bow is halfway between our legs. Switch both hands, 45 degree head block to the other side. Step in, chest strike, ski, Step back, walk down. Turn, chest strike. Switch hands and step, chest strike. Switch hands, chest strike. I'm sorry, overhead. Ski, everybody's allowed to make a mistake once in a while. We are going to turn and do a 45 block, but we are in a deep front stance. So this is very wushu looking 
um, which does demonstrate some of the influences in Mariotti Trovero and some of its origins. Pivot. Jam. Once again, the reverse ski. Block. Step in, chest strike. Switch hand. Step in, chest strike. Switch hand. Step back. Chest strike. Switch hand. Overhead. Ski. Fall away. Long block. Pivot. Jam. Block. Step back at a 45 degree angle. Side head. Come on. Ski. Switch both hands. Turn. Step back. Side head. Come on. Ski. Switch both hands. Overhead block. Come on. Ski. Come on. We come back to ready. Arigato goes my stop. Something to think about when we're doing when we're doing the uh, kata demonstration. It's we sometimes have to take half steps forward and back. But going back after the long block, it's a step forward, step forward, and a step back and then a step forward. So in the kata, in the first half of the kata, you're going forward with a chest strike, a chest strike, the overhead is only three steps. Going back is four steps. Hapu hapu show, no count, stay together. Back to ready. I got to go to stop. Well done, thank you. Okay, so we practice the katas. How do we demonstrate the meaning of the movements in the katas? So we have bunkais for. So Josh, Josie, bo bo bunkai. So a bunkai is a set series of movements. Think of it as almost either a choreographed fight or a two-man kata, or two-person kata. So Josie and Josh both know what the sequence of attacks and defenses will be. That doesn't make it any less real, and we have broken bows doing this. Uh, bow ties. What? We've done it twice. We've done it twice, but we haven't done it recently. We gotta get on that. Yes. At your own count, begin. Do it slowly, though. back to ready. So we're going to do it again, and this way I'm, we're going to do it slowly. I'm going to do, uh, define some of the attacks and defenses. So Josie's attacking is going to do two side head strikes. Now she's doing a middle attack, a low attack, a, a ski to the throat with the back of the bow, a chest strike, 
and now a low attack. And Josh will now counter with the exact same techniques. Josie will now be attacking, and she will do a sequence. No, she's not. Okay. Josh will be attacking. A series of four attacks, high, low, side, and side. Josie does the final techniques, final attacks. Hey! And because of the Zen balance of things, because Josie started the attacks in the bunkai, she ends up losing in the bunkai. Good. Let's get a contest and we'll do a contest. As we've said before, Tanva, all the Kobodo weapons are based on hand tools. Obviously, the bow is the walking stick of a traveler. Tanva is actually the handle for the grinding stone. It is both a defensive weapon. Obviously, its blocking applications are very apparent, but it can be used as a striking weapon. And I've seen it used as a hooking weapon. So one of the ways to practice handling of the weapon is this opening sequence, which is actually the opening sequence in the kata. So we start out with a double lower block, almost like a ready position. Let the tonfas drop, turn your palms over, and we are striking our opponent's chin. Let the tonfas drop back and carry that momentum into a forward rotation and strike to the top of the head. Flip the tonfas back, down to lower block. Itch, under, knee, over, back, down. San, under, over, back, down. When controlling the weapon, the tonfa locks into the ridge of the forearm. As we let it come forward, we loosen our grip on the weapon, then lock it in. Most tonfas will have a pronounced handle here or a nub. This allows you to use your thumb as part of the control. San, under, over, back, down. Shi, under, over, back, down. Go, under, over, back, down. Rook, under, over, back, down. Sitch, under, over, back, down. Hotch, under, over, back, down. Ku, under, over, back, down. Ju, under, over, back, down. A straightforward enough exercise, but it does teach a tremendous amount of control. In the beginning, I won't tell you how many times I hit myself in the head during doing this particular exercise, but it is the best way to learn how to control the weapon. Another technique we use, and we do this in, uh, in, uh, as we move through stances. So everybody right foot forward front stance, right hand out in a punch, left hand is a chamber in with tonfas, chamber is palm up, Tonfa is locked between your arm and your rib. You don't want it floating around. Step forward, punch. We are going to strike to the head, and the right hand will go into a block position. Strike back at the head, overhead to the head. Back to a block position. Step forward, punch. On the right side, we are striking the knee. So two strikes at the knee and then a strike to the head. Back to block. San, punch, head, head, head. Back. Shi, punch, knee, knee, head. Back, down. Go, punch, head, head, back. Sitch, 
punch. Knee, knee, head, back. Shui, go. Sorry. Hot, sorry. Punch, head, head, head. Back to block position. Ku, punch. Knee, knee, head, back. Ju, punch. Head, 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 back down. You'll wonder, I'm sure you're wondering why do we do knee strikes on the right side and head strikes on the left side? It's the way the kata is. This basic represents about 50 to 60% of the kata. Uh, the pattern is repeated multiple times to the kata, so if you master this technique, the kata is that much uh, easier to deal with. Um, okay, let's do size. Personally, I found the tantras are the hardest weapon to handle, even though they may be simpler than the size. There's something about the weight of the size that I find easier to handle. So when we are using the size, once again, the question is, what would be the tool application of the size, like all Kobodo weapons? I've been told they're short-handled hay balers, and that they could also have been used for poking holes in the ground for planting rice um, uh, planting rice. When you're using the size, it is a blocking weapon. So when you are blocking with it, you want to make sure that the size is on the outside of your arm, not this way. Uh, this is not a very good way to, uh, to protect yourself. You want to protect your arm so there's a little more wrist uh, flexibility or is required. When you punch with the side, your forefinger is on the center time. When you are blocking with it, now your fingers are wrapped around the handle. In turning and changing uh, positions with the sai, let the sai rest into the thumbs and then wrap your fingers around the handle. Going in the other direction, drop the thumbs and the sai will automatically rotate. So the sai in many ways is easier, I think, to handle than the tantra because of the natural weight of it. A traditional sai will have an octagonal shape on the front tine. So if the sai is round, it is not as effective as a weapon because it will not be able to bite in to another weapon and hold it. You lose some of the capability of the weapon when it's silver. Or shiny and uh, round. Yes, uh, chrome is not a very effective um, uh, side material. Side material. So, a good basic, as similar to the tonfo. We start out in a uh, lower uh, double lower block. We let the sides come down. We rotate, bring the sides up. They are pointed outward. This is a block to either side of the head for an upper attack. Let it rotate, come down. Itch. Knee. So the sides are about uh, head height and shoulder height. San. Shi. Go. Rope. Sitch. Hatch. Ju. Ju. Good. So a basic that once again represents about 50% of the kata. Right foot forward, right hand out. Now where the tonfa chamber position was palm up, if we do that, we're going to perforate our ribs with the uh, side. So in this case, in the chamber position, the side is, uh, your chamber hand is palm towards the chest. Right, right hand is out in a punch position. Step forward, punch. We're going to let the side rotate, and we're going to go to a block to the outside, and we are going to have pulled back into a cat stance. 
So I'm blocking an attack on my left side. Now I'm doing a lower block. Slide back into a front stance and thrust. And yes, this is as painful as it looks. Turn over, block down. In this case, the side is turned so the, it is protecting my arm. Step through, punch. Now to the other side. Cat stance, block to the right, lower block, slide in thrust, down block. Sign, punch, block, block, thrust, block down. Step through, punch, block, block, thrust, block down. Step through, punch, block, block, punch, or thrust, sorry, block down. Step through, punch, block, block, thrust, block down. Nine, punch, lock, lock, thrust, lock down, last one, punch, lock, lock, thrust, lock down. Good. Right, you ready? So thank you very much. That was uh, this that uh, it for this week's class. We'll finish as always. Moxo, Sounds in position. Eyes closed. Come A. We bow. Ray. We will train our hearts and bodies. We will train our hearts and bodies for a firm, unshaking spirit. For a firm, unshaking spirit. We will pursue the true meaning of the martial way. We will pursue the true meaning of the martial way. So that in time. So that in time. Our senses may be alert. Our senses may be alert. With true vigor. With true vigor. We will seek to cultivate. We will seek to cultivate a spirit of self-denial. A spirit of self-denial. We will observe the rules of courtesy. We will observe the rules of courtesy. Respect our superiors. Respect our superiors. And refrain from violence. And refrain from violence. We will look upwards to wisdom and strength. We will look upwards to wisdom and strength. Not seeking other desires. Not seeking other desires. We will follow our gods. We will follow our gods. And never forget. And never forget. The true virtue of humility. The true virtue of humility. All our lives. All, all our lives. Through the discipline of the martial arts. Through the discipline of the martial arts. We will seek to fulfill. We will seek to fulfill. The true meaning of the way. The true meaning of the way. Thank you very much for a good class. Yes. Yes.